Hello, Craig Birch here from Seconds Out. I'm here at the Barclay Card Arena ahead of Saturday's show after today's final press conference where I have here matchroom head honcho, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, busy as always and so on. And uh, cool, this boxing game doesn't often run you ragged, oh, doesn't it? You so. always tend to get me right at the end. Yeah. You know, just when I'm going, it's like, oh, one more, go on then. Well, it's like a media, it's like a rugby scrum trying to get older oh, no, these no, days no, though, no, isn't no, it? So, That's the thing. Um, no, it's good. Pack show on Saturday, 12 fights. Yeah. Um, and good to be back in Birmingham, of course, with World Championship Boxing. Of course. Which is uh, the first time in a while and the first ever world champion carrier fight, but a pack card as well. Yeah, yeah. How tickets gone for this one as compared yeah, to the other 6, shows? 6,000, so well, it's decent. I mean, we're spoilt these days, aren't we? With 90,000 here and yeah. 20,000 there. But That put a little bit of money in the pot, didn't yeah, it, in all the fairness? Fa so. The fact is, is not many shows are doing five, six, seven thousand 7,000 these days or outside of the big box office show. So I'm very happy with the crowd here. You still get a situation in Birmingham where the majority of the tickets come from the fighter sales which is a bit strange really, like normally mm. they come from the box office as well. But that shows you that there's a strong community in, yeah, in Birmingham in terms of, around boxing. Yeah. You know, so you kind of feel like everybody in the arena on Saturday is actual real boxing fan and they'll get their money's worth because it's a stack show. Yeah, but you don't get too many walk-ups on the day. That's the thing, it Not tends really, to be all boxers and friends of boxers. Yeah. in Birmingham. Uh, but we also find that in darts. Yeah. You don't get as big a crowd in Birmingham as you do in Liverpool and Manchester and London and those kind of places. So. Um, maybe it's just something in the water. <laughs> yeah. But we're happy with 6,000. I mean, I think that if we were doing two and a half, three, three and a half, you'd start to question it and say, is there any potential to grow? But at the moment, the shows are good, the crowd's good, looks good on TV, so we're, we're here to stay in Birmingham. Oh. As long as the lads keep winning. Of course, of course, and they've got to perform as well, haven't they? You know, yeah, you're fighting against an animal. Pressure so. on Caliafar. Looked great in his last fight to win the world title. Um, but I think that. Uh, he should look good against Maranaka, it'll be a tough fight. Mm. Sam Eggington, gone from a fairy tale story to actually someone who started thinking maybe he could change for a world title soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what was the yarn about, you know, the world champion asking for Eggington over Gavin and so on? That was one we, we talked about in the previous press conference, yeah. wasn't it? Under, under Grandamore, and uh, yeah. that could have paid for his house if I bet yeah, Sam went. But he's gone on and he's making a lot of money now in these fights. You know, box Paulie Manonagi on pay per view, he's fighting for the European title on Saturday, so. I think he's two wins away from challenging for a world title. Really. Yeah, yeah. I think it was it Bradley. I think the the name who asked for him. Garcia. Before. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was Garcia, Garcia wasn't it? So yeah, they they asked for his availability. They didn't make him a firm offer, but we talked numbers and um, you know, like I said, I think if I'm a world champion now, a welterweight, I think Eggington is definitely a name that's going into the pot if he can beat Rodriguez on Saturday. Yeah, you do wonder if some of these you know big illustrious names look at Eggington as an, as another Rocky story yeah, and selling no, it. They look at him as, uh, as an easy fight until they get in there with him and realise he's not. I mean, he's not hard to hit, but he's getting better. You know, he's, he's improving technically, he's learning, he's becoming more mature as a fighter. Um, but he has a tough fight against Rodriguez. He's been sparring with Kel Brook, uh, Rodriguez, and Kel tells me he's a very, very accomplished fighter. Yeah. So we'll see. Of course, and obviously you've got Sergio Martinez here as well. well so Again, I'm not sure he's not here for a holiday in Birmingham. No. So they obviously fancy the job fancy the fight and um, they'll be cheering him on from ringside. Of course, of course, and obviously so much more in the world of boxing to talk about as well. Kel Brook, how's Kel looking? Looking Hell, great, so. weight's great. Um, I'm really excited about this fight. I think Brook yes. Spence's fight of the year for me. Um, obviously got Groves Trudinov on the undercard as well. It's a huge double header from Bramall Lane. Yeah, I mean um, Spence, is, Spence is a handful, isn't it? He's got, you know, he's got Algeri, Van Hoot. Yeah, so. 50-50 fight, but you know, I believe Kel Brook's gonna knock him out. I, I, I rate Kel Brook so highly. Um, I think you saw it against Golovkin, but obviously he was always up against it. Mm. Now you have a 50-50 fight, level playing field, and I think you're going to see Brook shine. Of course, of course. I mean, I saw something as well. Craig, you remember Craig Cunningham as well? He's yeah, gone over to help Kel with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, will Craig be featuring on further shows with yourself going yeah, he forward? he come so. on this one, but he was due to fight Tommy Langford for the British title. Yeah. Um, that got pulled, but by then we'd already built our card here. Yeah. So we didn't really have room for him, but happy to have Craig back uh, for the next one in Birmingham for sure. Well, you could even put a case for it for maybe him and Jason Wellborn for the yeah, WBC yeah. international I mean, belts later in the year. Wellborn was so. outstanding in that fight with Marcus Morrison. And, you know, he's someone that we will be looking to get back on the shows as well. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, that's good news for those two gentlemen there as well. Yeah. Obviously, looking forward as well, the dust is... Could argue it's still settling on Wembley and so on. But everyone is still talking about it and so on. And uh, my goodness, what a fantastic fight! Eddie. I mean, it was one for the ages, wasn't it? It was. So. It was a night I think we'll never forget. And uh, you know, like I say, we've got to build on that now. I think it's the biggest night for British boxing in its history. Yeah. And people want to watch boxing now. We want to see the stars coming through. You know, you've got fighters like Cal Yafai. I mean, what a great young fighter he is. Mm. Um, 
grew up with Anthony Joshua at the they GB yeah. set up. They yeah. both inspired each other. And actually on that show, when uh, Cal beat Conception, Anthony went into the change room after and celebrated with him and he'll be watching on Saturday night. But all these guys are buzzing off Anthony and Joshua. It makes people want to watch boxing. It makes people want to attend. And uh, hopefully the same people that watched on Saturday for Joshua will be coming to the Barclay Card Arena, will be tuning in on Sky Sports and continuing to help rich boxing grow. Of course, of course. Obviously, you mentioned there you've got to build on the success of Wembley and so on. Do you build on that with the rematch? That's the first question. Uh, it? so possibly. I think Klitschko needs a holiday for a couple of weeks and then we'll... Yeah, I think he's already gone on holiday, isn't he? Is, he? Yeah, so. yeah. Would you book it for him? <laughs> no, I just saw he said he got... I think his manager said he'd gone away yeah, with yeah, his... Yeah, um, yeah. I think he'll take a couple of weeks to decide, but I think he'll... Probably be, with your money, though, Eddie, yeah, I would have thought. Is, probably <laughs> is. He probably He earned it. He, he just certainly did, I think did, he'll yeah. be buoyed by his performance. Now, if, it, if he would have looked poor or ageing, I think he would have said, no, that's me done. But he'd probably be thinking, I could have got him out there in the fifth or sixth, yeah. so he might want another crack. But we won't make any decisions on AJ for the next four or five weeks. Of course, but obviously you will be observing what Tyson Fury's up to. Is he going to get his licence back? Has that already happened and so, so on? He's so. got a lot to come through. Not just with UCAD, but with VADA and the British Boxing Board of Control. But listen, there's no one who wants Tyson Fury back in the division more than myself and, and AJ. Yeah. You know, that's a huge fight for the division, but he's got a lot of hurdles to overcome. Of course, of course. And obviously going forward, it's just more of these blockbuster shows and so on, isn't that's it? That's the plan. So, you know, don't take the foot off the gas. Keep, keep the buzz going. Got to make real fights. Got to make great fights. That's the only way you're going to keep growing the sport. You're under more pressure now than ever to make those big fights because there's so many of them happening. Of course, who's next in line then to have a big fight decided for him? Is James DeGale, I suppose, yeah, is James one? James DeGale looking at a fight for him. You know, you've got Callum Smith in that mix. He's got the Durrell fight as well. You've got Ryan Burnett's fight and Lee Haskins. Um, you know, you've got Brooke against Spence, Groves against Chudnoff. Then you've got Dillian White coming out looking for a shot at maybe Parker. Bellew against Hay possibly again. AJ returning. Oh, it's it's non stop. Bellew Hay, is that is is there any movement? Is well, I, 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 I saw David Hay was walking up the Great Wall of China. Yeah, I wasn't talked it? to him so. uh, this morning actually. His, his recovery is going a little bit better than anticipated. Uh, they, they want the rematch, and I think the fans want it. But Tony's got some options as well, and uh, we'll have a look at what he wants to do. Could it get done by the end of the year, perhaps? I think so. Yeah, but I think we, Tony needs to box by the end of the year. So if Hay's ready, he does go into the pot as an option. Okay, excellent as well. We talk about um, De Gale. You've just signed a very exciting super middleweight mm. fighter in Jamie Cox as well. Jamie, no one wants to fight Jamie Cox and they haven't done for quite some time. Yeah, so, I, I rate Jamie Cal. Cox very so. highly. I mean, he's actually someone that I've been watching the last couple of years, watching knock people out. And it's not just watching him on TV, he's speaking to people in the gyms and in boxing who tells me he's a very dangerous man. Yeah. So the plan is to get him out on the Kelbrook card, actually. Um, get out, he hasn't boxed for a while and then go on and be involved in big big fights in the super middleweight division. Yeah, he's a dangerous man who hasn't got the belts to reflect yes, it though, isn't right, it? So right, you can't can, just chuck him into a no, DeGale fight, that, that's that, the thing, that isn't it? Come, but people know about him here. People know how dangerous he is. So it's just a case of matching him right, letting him learn, letting him fight on the big stage, get the exposure, and then he'll be ready for a world title shot as well. Is it, I mean, obviously when you sign guys, you always think of the long the long term, that you know their highest accolade that they can bring to the camps. Is, is it Cox, De Gale? Is that the one for you, do you feel? Or is there other options? He's in a with Cox, uh, De Gale, Eubank, Smith, Groves, all these guys. Yeah. So he's in a great division. We've got to get him some exposure. We've got to let people watch him. We've got to get him active again. And then he'll be knocking on the door for all those guys. Yeah, Cox, Eubank makes a lot of sense yeah, at the minute. I've offered to pay it. I said I'd provide Cox for free in that fight. So I'll pay his purse. Just make the fight. Let me guess, you've heard nothing back Correct. since then. Yeah, yeah. Not, not many people are queuing up to fight Jamie Cox. <laughs> no, no, no. But the Eubanks, do you think at least they'd offer an opinion on it? Or at least yeah. on Twitter or something, yeah. they normally do, don't they? So, but anyway, that's a good way to end the interview. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's it, fantastic. Thanks no for your time, Eddie. We'll see you tomorrow.